Hi everyone, yes, I will be reviewing, as the title says, Iron Man 2008 in 2019, because I thought that it would be a really cool idea to review all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies after watching Endgame, starting from 2008's Iron Man onwards, so let's get to it. So Iron Man is about Tony Stark's not so humble beginnings of becoming Iron Man when his convoy gets blown up by the Ten Rings, a terrorist organization, and was kidnapped by them in Afghanistan. He was later brought to their camp where he was saved by a doctor called Yinsen, who operated on Tony and built an electromagnet onto his chest to prevent the shrapnels embedded in his chest area from the attack from entering into his heart. Afterward, they forced Tony to build the Jericho missile for their own purposes. Unfortunately, this had terribly backfired, as instead of complying with their demands, Tony and Yinsen discreetly built the Iron Man Mark I, the first ever Iron Man suit instead and used it to blow up the camp and escaped. And throughout the rest of the movie, it shows Tony perfecting his design of the Iron Man suit and how he turned from an arrogant and reckless genius billionaire playboy philanthropist to a slightly less arrogant and reckless genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Okay, now that is all out of the way. I'm going to first tell you guys about what worked for me in this movie, which was firstly, well, this film was very well sequenced and had an impactful story of besides showing how Iron Man was created. It also shows how his experience in Afghanistan made Tony realize that his manufactured weapons were not only used to stop wars, but also starting them upon seeing them being used by the Ten Rings. As a result, it gave him a new direction in life and prompted him to immediately pull the plot on the manufacturing of weapons in Stark Industries upon his return to the States. Secondly, love the dialogue and performance from the actors and the fact that they had the freedom to make their own dialogue, molding their own roles in the process. Thirdly, great sequence in showing the stages of Tony developing his suit. Fourth, visual effects were stupendous, showing how real and sleek the Iron Man suit was while showing its palm blasters and flying, well, rocket flying features. What? Fifthly, the movie had a very superhero feel with many great superhero moments while being accompanied with the rocking soundtrack, especially with the significant scene where Tony flew back to Afghanistan to stop an attack from, uh, well, you know, it's an attack by the Ten Rings by demonstrating the indestructible power of his finalized Iron Man suit. Sixthly, villains with diabolical and relatable agendas despite not being involved much in the film. Seventhly, extra showing Nick Fury, which at the time made me thrilled, looking forward to the Avengers movie. Okay, so now that I'm done talking about what I liked about this movie, it's time for me to move on to the problems I thought this movie had, which is firstly, well, for some of the dire scenes such as Tony being brought to the Ten Rings camp, as well as being tortured by them after he refuses to assemble the Jericho missile for them, I felt like those scenes, first of all, they did not have enough footages for, for them, as well as being edited, edited abruptly, which resulted in those scenes coming off to not being real and convincing enough. Secondly, would be the plot holes this movie had, such as the scene where Obadiah Stane was supposed to be apprehended at Stark Industries by Pepper and the Five Shoe Agents. Now, the problem I thought this this part of the story had was that, well, despite Tony being able to warn Pepper and the Five Shoe Agents, who were only wearing suits and armed with pistols and detonators, of the possibility that Metal Monger was hiding in Stark Industries with this finished suit, he still doesn't bother to call them and lets them go in there blind. Now on to the third and final problem I thought this movie had, would be the final showdown between Iron Man and Metal Monger, who was controlled by Obadiah Stane, as there wasn't as much superhero action as I was anticipating that fight to have. There wasn't as much, as much punching or flying or blasting or explosions, okay, probably due to budget reasons. So now that I'm done talking about the good and bad points this movie had, I would still say that overall, Iron Man is still a great movie and definitely a great opening to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, watching this movie back in 2008 just made me really, you know, just made me see the potential that Marvel Studios actually had, which made me really, really thrilled to, to seeing their following movies, which, well, the following movies definitely did not disappoint. 
Okay, so now that is the end of my review for this awesome movie. And for those who have been watching my videos, I'm hoping you guys like this approach of me putting my voice instead, you know, in, in my in this review instead of showing my gay face. As well, I'm trying out this this new approach to see how it goes. So. Thank you guys for watching this review let me know of your opinion of this movie as well as whether you guys prefer to just hear my voice and i hope to see you guys again with my next review